So one question that I often get on this channel is which Fujifilm lens should I buy? And this is a question that I cannot answer directly because it's a very personal one. What I can share with you though is my decision process on how I choose the lenses that I need and how I make my purchasing decision. So let's find out what Fujifilm lens you should buy together. So the first step that I think you should take when you try to decide which lens you want to purchase is first to really emphasize on what is the field of view that you want to have, right? And that seems very obvious, but how much you want to include in your picture, what you want to, to see, right? Do you really want to isolate your subject or do you really want to showcase the environment around your subject? This is something that um, most of the time I see a lot of people not really think about enough. If you buy, uh, let's say, a 20 millimeter lens or 23 millimeter, um, it's very different pictures. You will get very different pictures between a 23 and uh, let's say a 56, right? And not only you will you get different kind of pictures, but if you want to use them in the same scenario, you might not be able to do so because for you to include as much as possible uh, of the subject in a 56, you need more space. You need to be able to go a bit back further. So for this case, let's say the 90 millimeter F2, if you are mostly shooting inside, might not be the right lens for you. So think about the field of view, but also think about the use cases that you will have and how much space you have to be able to use this lens. Do you want to focus on the environment? Do you want to focus on your subject? Do you really want to have very close up shots? That's something that you have to think about. And I think that is the first logical step when it comes to choosing a lens. Now, another important step is how compact and how portable the lens is. Um, a lot of people would like to go for the best quality lens, the best zoom that they are out there, but what they don't realize is that those lenses also come with, of course, a price, but a certain weight, right? If you want to shoot a portrait with the 50mm f1.0 from Fujifilm, get ready to have a heavy lens stuck to your camera. Um, same if you want to get the 60, 16 to 55 millimeter f 2.8. Uh, this is a great lens, but it comes with a certain weight that you have to consider before purchasing it. Like right now, I'm holding my camera with one arm, right? Um, if I'm doing that with a super heavy lens, it might not be the right lens for the use case, right? So you have to think about, okay, how much space do you have in your bag? What are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna hike for like hours and hours to take pictures? And maybe you want to keep your your kit quite compact and quite small, which is also why some people would choose Fujifilm over a full frame counterpart because the lenses tend to be a bit smaller. But yeah, you have to think about, okay, if you work in studio, maybe that's not a big deal for you. Maybe you are okay having uh, better quality lenses, even though uh, the lenses will be bigger. So it really depends on your use case. If you are a landscape photographer, for example, and you really want a wide angle and a telephoto that will help you capture some specific aspect, but also the whole landscape, um, the 8 to, I forgot, the 8 to 16 millimeter uh, f2.8 might not be the right lens for you because it's like gigantic, super heavy, and that, that's not the lens that you would want, but the 10 to 24 is more compact um, and has also, you know, good um, performance that will help you capture great, great pictures. So before you purchase a lens, make sure that you consider how heavy it is and if you are able to handle its weight. Now let's talk about a subject that people love talking about, which is aperture. Before purchasing a lens and going for the best aperture, that uh, I mean the, the highest aperture that you can find, uh, really ask yourself, do you need that much uh, aperture and do you need that really shallow depth of field? If I'm a landscape photographer, I don't need to get, you know, f1.4 lenses necessarily. 
or maybe I do, but it depends on what I want to shoot, right? But the 10 to 24 mm f4 is a great lens for landscape photography, and my clients really want to have shallow depth of field to have that kind of professional, what people would call professional look, right? Which is not necessarily the case. But if that's what my client expect, um, it might make sense to get, you know, an f2 or an f1.4 lens. But it really depends again on your use case. But to come back to the point of size and weight, the higher the aperture, the heavier the lens you will get. So keep that in mind in your purchase decision. But not only do you have to think about the, minim the maximum aperture, but you also have to think about how well the lens that you are going to purchase is performing at that maximum aperture and what is the ideal range of aperture for the lens. Let's say you buy uh, the 50mm f2, that lens is sharp from f2 to maximum value, right? it's an extremely sharp lens. But if you buy a third party lens that has a shallow aperture, um, let's say for example, uh, let's take a, as an example the Helios, right? The Helios 44.2, I think, 58mm uh, f2. At f2, that's, that lens has a lot, a lot of flare and is not sharp. But maybe that's what you want to go for. So you really have to understand what is the use case and how you're gonna use the lens, right? And at which aperture you would like to use it. If you expect an extremely sharp lens at f2, at the minimum aperture for the Helios, then that might not be the lens for you to get, right? So consider not only what minimum aperture and what maximum aperture you can get with a lens, but also consider what is the best performance for that lens for specific aperture range. And that's why whenever I try to review a lens, I try to give you like the ideal aperture range because that's also something that I think people should understand and should think and care about. It's not only about having the shallowest depth of field, but it's also about really considering what kind of result you can get in what aperture range. So before you make a purchasing decision, make sure that you think about that. Now let's also talk about autofocus capability because this is something that is also very important based on your use case, right? If you're someone that solely focus on really fast moving subjects and really need the lens to be able to take pictures or videos, right, of those fast moving subjects, then that is also something very important to consider. On the other hand, if you're someone that is mostly into still photography, um, still subject photography, right? And does not need that autofocus capability, then that's also important to consider. Of course, you can get a more expensive lens that will allow you to capture anything and everything, but you might as well save some money on getting a proper lens that has good image quality without necessarily having great autofocus. Fujifilm has tons of less lenses that have good autofocus capabilities, especially the linear models one, as well as the F2 lenses, the Fuji Chrome lenses, 35, uh, what is it, 35, 23, as well as 50, good autofocus capabilities. Also the 90mm F2 is great for that. And then if you go towards the linear model lenses, uh, the 23, f1.4 the 33 millimeter f1.4 and uh, as well as other linear, linear motors you will definitely get some good autofocus uh, capabilities but if you are someone who don't need those it might not be necessarily uh, interesting for you to get those and you might as well save a little bit of money and get something that is a bit slower even though that's, that's totally fine right get something that is a little bit slower to focus but that will still get the job done for you and I know that online you will hear a lot that uh, if it doesn't hit focus 100% of the time, the focus is shit. But honestly, I mean, photographers have been, you know, manually focusing for a long time and they get the job done. They got the job done with it for years and years, right? Nowadays, we're kind of spoiled with the autofocus capabilities of the lenses. So it is important, don't get me wrong, but don't get too much, I mean, don't think too much about it because most of the lenses nowadays focus properly, especially Fujifilm. Uh, you might have some clunkier one like the, the first version of the 56mm f1.2 or the 35mm f1.4, the older version as well, that are very slow 
to focus and they are known to be slow to focus but otherwise most of the time you will get something that can get the job done and can focus fast enough Now, weather sealing is also something that is important to consider uh, whenever you make a purchase because it depends on your shooting style again which is why this is kind of a generic guideline video if you are someone that wants to be able to capture shots uh, whatever the weather right if you travel a lot and want to be able to go to desert or to rainy forest where it's quite humid or uh, like today right near nearby a lake if there are some splashes of water whatever and if you want to be able to capture uh, pictures without worrying too much about the weather the humidity or any any sand getting in there weather thinning is kind of a must however if you're someone who's solely work in studio right don't need to really take pictures outside doesn't make sense to invest money in weather sealing doesn't make sense to you know spend that bit bit much money there you could actually save some money and get something that performs well for what you need without having to have the, the, the weather ceiling itself but if you are someone that really wants to not care about that and be able to shoot whenever you want then you might want to get weather ceiling personally i always get weather ceiling on my lenses because of what i do um, i do both travel photography as well as portrait photography for client uh, in different conditions like today right if it rains I should still be able to take some shots so for me it's important but for some other people uh, it might not be the case and finally let's talk about price because price is definitely a factor when buying a lens right and I put this in last because you have to understand that every single factor that I mentioned before is going to influence the price of the lens, right? So once you understand a bit what are your needs, you can have basically a list of what is important for you and then choose depending on your budget, right? Nowadays we are blessed with good third-party lenses as well so it's important also for you to consider what is your budget and decide if you want to go with uh, you know Fuji Fujifilm lens or if you want to go for a third-party lens and third-party tend to usually be a bit cheaper but it doesn't mean that they are necessarily uh, worse quality now of course this is case by case I cannot list all the lenses all the third-party lenses out there uh, I've reviewed some of my ch on my channel you can check the videos but based on uh, you know the, the the field of view that you want the aperture um, the weight as well as uh, the autofocus capabilities that you want um, with those requirements think about your budget and then you can decide whether or not you want to go with the Fujifilm native lens or third-party lens based on the price. So I hope that this video was helpful to use. This is basically my decision process whenever I'm thinking about purchasing a new lens. And yeah, I wanted to share that with you because I often get the question, which lens should I buy? And I can't answer every single question uh, when it comes to recommendations. But typically, that's that's the questions that I go through every time. It's like, okay, what, what do you need exactly, right? And having this kind of decision process is very important to me because I'd rather, you know, teach you how to fish than just give you a fish, you know? That's, that's the, the concept here. So, yeah, I think it's important to understand exactly what you need before you purchase something and whether or not you need some specific aspect of a lens or not. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the view as well because it's beautiful weather today. And let me know if you have any questions and maybe, yeah, just in the comment, go through the different decision process that I mentioned and yeah, tell me what lens you would like to get next. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.